Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. And blah, blah, Marvel Zombies, should you back it, all of that. We're going to get into all of that stuff. And timestamps down below for any relevant section. And if I'm excited at all doing this whole thing, it's because I like this game and I like Zombicide and I like Marvel and all that stuff. And so, yes, I might be excited as we go through this. But first and foremost, I've just done the math on this. There is a not unreasonable chance that this becomes the highest crowdfunded board game ever. At least as of right now. No, no, seriously. Marvel Zombies, as of right now, has just crossed $3.2 million in day one. It is not at all unreasonable that this will surpass Frosthaven to be the most funded board game Kickstarter ever. And let me show you the math. And then from there, we'll go into the game, the should you back it, all the usual stuff. But um, this is not hyperbole. This is, let, let's just go through it. It's going to be a lot faster if we do this. Marvel Zombies over here, 12,000 backers, $3.2 million. This is all day one, okay? This is all day one. We'll get to the useful stuff shortly. I'm just, I just figured this is kind of cool. And for the record, my prediction before this thing launched was that it would hit at least $7 million. I wanted to say it were to pass Frosthaven, but I thought that sounded crazy. And I was like, that was just going to look stupid. So I didn't say that. What was me? I regret that now. I should have said it. So here's the math. Here's the math, okay? 3.2 million dollars day one if we look at kick track kick track which is a good indicator in general of how well campaigns do okay kick track we have the following and we specifically want to look at command campaigns here because if you actually compare marvel zombies to frosthaven directly frosthaven directly on day one hit four and a half million dollars okay so by that metric this is not going to be frosthaven frosthaven was ahead of the curve by that metric alone but there's more data here because at the end of the day Come on, campaigns, cool mini or not, their campaigns have a lot of add-ons and they have a lot of a different campaign trajectory that will inflate the price over the course of the campaign that will make their starting day one compared to their ending total vastly different. Okay, so we have to look at command campaigns. And to that end, if we look at the total funding of Master of the Universe, one of the more recent campaigns from them, the total funding was $2 million. Their day one funding was $635,000, which is basically a three point something multiplier. Okay, so in other words, the total funding was more than three times the day one funding. If we use that as the metric, then Marvel Zombies will cross $10 million, but that's not enough to beat the $13 million of Frosthaven. No, it's not. So we have to go a little deeper. Let's look at the next one, Zombicide Undead or Alive. This should be a closer fit, right? This is a Zombicide game, so it's probably a better indicator. The most recent Zombicide game that Kaman had on Kickstarter. We saw a total of $3.3 million raised and a total of $638,000 day one. That's a 5.2 multiplier. This is going to bring you to $16 million. If we extrapolate the same campaign trajectory, we're going to see $16 million total raised on Marvel Zombies. But we're not done yet because we still can take this one further. We can take this to Marvel United. If we look at the Marvel United 2.8 million total versus the $400,000 day one, that is a seven point something multiplier bringing you to $23 million raised. So looking at the most recent Marvel campaigns, the most recent Zombicide campaigns, this thing by all accounts should cross Frosthaven. Now, it's not 100% guaranteed, not in the slightest. This one obviously has the distinction of having the highest day one pledge, which means you might not see the same level of multiplier. It might not. But it's very, very cool that where I'm looking at it right now, this might become the most funded board game Kickstarter, which is going to make a lot of people like myself think that's very cool, and a lot of people pretty ticked off that a Zombicide game with a Marvel IP slapped on it uh, is the most funded board game Kickstarter. Either way, let's go ahead and get into it. That's just, I just thought that was cool. Uh, come on, if you're seeing this, I hope you guys have done those numbers because those numbers are looking pretty good for you. In any case, let's go ahead and go into this. Marvel Zombies. Marvel Zombies is the newest implementation of the Zombicide universe. It's a Zombicide game. It's the first time. It's not really, you know, Marvel Zombicide. It's Marvel Zombies, a Zombicide game. And part of that's going to be because of the fact that they are actually not doing this completely with um, Guillotine Games. They're doing this kind of an association with their blessing. It's a little different, the relationship that they're doing in this one. Uh, it's not designed by the Guillotine team it's it's designed based off the marvel based off the zombicide framework the zombicide framework for those who don't know is basically a system in which you have a number of heroes the heroes have a number of actions they can take the actions are going to be utilized to take out various baddies and eventually you're trying to accomplish objectives and you're leveling up and the baddies are getting more powerful as you play and you're trying to outlast them you can do different things like searching moving attacking all stuff like that rolling dice and getting better and better and more powerful as the enemies do as well it is both a bear and pretzels kind of game in the sense that it's fun light and easy to get into to 
while also generally having enough strategy in the systems to be rewarding to people who are looking for a challenge. And one of my frustrations with the recent Zombicide games has been that I felt the challenge has slowly been sliding downhill as time has gone on. Now, I can't speak for Undead or Alive, but games like Invader, games like Second Edition, I felt were a step down in terms of the level of challenge they brought to the table compared to the Black Hit Plagues and Green Hordes of the day. Black Plague has been my favorite Zombicide system until now. And I say until now as somebody who has had a chance to dive into the Marvel Zombie games. If you check out the Crackle of Gameplays, I played as both the zombies as well as the heroes. I like playing as the heroes more, I'll note that, but I like playing as both of them, and they are both strong contenders in terms of the, the level of gameplay they bring, the level of changes to the Zombicide system, and the level of, uh, of first of all, the, art, uh, the Marvel IP, I'm a huge fan of that, but they bring a lot of changes to the system, and they managed to keep the difficulty there, such that we lost one of those games pretty badly, I'll let you watch those videos yourself to see which one, but we lost one of those games pretty badly, and the other one we won by the skin of our teeth, this is really a contender to be my favorite Zombicide system, both because of the IP as well as the gameplay changes as well as the difficulty aspect that I do not feel it is a walk in the park. I don't mind rolling dice and having fun, but I want it to be challenging, and this certainly has delivered on that. That's the core idea of what the Zombicide universe is and what the Marvel Zombies is bringing to the table. Marvel Zombies is specifically coming to the table with two core pledges that we're going to be going over. The first core pledge, and the main one they're selling, although it's not my favorite game mode, at least based on my, well, one play at each so far, the main core pledge, the, play, the core premise is the Undead Pledge. That's the new one they're selling, where instead of fighting against the zombies, you are the zombies. You are the heroes, you become infected, you are basically playing as, well, you know, heroes turned into zombies, and you're fighting against a variety of shield agents as your primary walkers or enemies, so instead of eating zombies or killing zombies, whatever it is, you are zombies and you're taking out shield agents, and then along the way, uh, you'll have Thor and Doctor Strange and Spider-Man and various heroes trying to get in your way. These heroes presenting as the abominations, what were previously abominations in other Zombicide games, you have heroes. Now, this game is going to be taking a lot of, I'm not going to go into the full mechanics, and you can check that out on some of the videos, or some of the other videos I've done around the subject, but basically, there's going to be some gameplay changes. Some of the things are standard in terms of, you know, number of heroes, actions, things like that. Uh, the number of heroes is actually different. Number of heroes is going to be more more like Undead or Alive, where you're primarily playing as four heroes, uh, you're going to be going ahead and taking actions with those heroes, you're going to be focusing, if you're playing as zombies, it's going to be very heavily utilizing the the uh, focused fire mechanic from Invader, where various abominations will have more wounds, and you can try to roll dice to take out a bunch of them at once to, to try to do, inflict more wounds on abominations as possible, but it's dealing with new things like hunger. You know, if you're playing as the zombies, you have a hunger mechanic where you have to eat various bystanders, or you have to eat anyone to keep your hunger in check, and if you don't do so, you'll be taking damage, plus your action availability will be limited because you have to feed. Meanwhile, if you're playing as the heroes, you have a power mechanism, an action point mechanism utilized for power, where you can augment and empower your action as you go through the game, and you're working with a bit of a resource there, meanwhile you're trying to rescue the bystanders instead of eating them, because heroes, heroes don't want to eat bystanders, shockingly enough. In both systems, as you get bystanders, either through saving them or through, uh, either through eating them or saving them, you will unlock new abilities. Additionally, both systems have you, instead of searching for items like pistols or weapons or whatever it is, or, you know, water that you can drink for experience points, in both these systems, instead, you'll be getting these various uh, perks that you can utilize to, to more focus on the, the superhero nature of what you are, whether infected or, you know, regular superhero. That's the core basic pledge idea. From there, we have the $240, that's going to be $130 plus shipping for the game. The $240 Resistance Pledge is going to give you two game systems. You'll get the Marvel Zombies core system, and you'll also get the X-Men Resistance core system. Now, the X-Men Resistance is basically what you imagine. It's you're getting, in addition to the, the core zombie system over here, you're getting playing as the heroes. Those are the two different modes I've talked about. And of course, the way this game is primarily selling itself is the idea that if you get both systems, you can have cross-compatible play. You can have your heroes fighting against zombies, you can have your zombies fighting against heroes, you can roll reverse, you know, if you wanted to play uh, as an infected, you know, uh, Dark Phoenix, you can go ahead and do so if you have the Marvel Zombies core hunger box, whatever it is. So you have that degree of having extra playability within the, within the genre, so you're going to be highly incentivized, just from a pure value you have in your box, you're going to be highly incentivized to go ahead and dive into the Resistance Pledge to get both of those. From there, you can get the Galactus Pledge for $410, and this is where I highly, I mean, this 5,289 people backing this pledge, more than the other two pledges combined, but I highly encourage you to question whether that additional $170 is going to be worth it to you. The additional $170 is going to give you the level of gameplay you want. This is a lot of extra stuff, and you're getting a giant Galactus Mini. Now, it's cool. 
It is cool, and it has gameplay in patch, and it has Silver Surfer, and it has two different swappable heads for both modes. You're getting a lot of stuff here. But it's also $170, which is not a small amount of money, so I highly encourage anyone who is considering backing at the, Gal backing at the Galactus Pledge level or getting it as an add-on, just make sure that you A, have the space for it, because you're going to need space for that miniature. Not really a miniature anymore. You're going to need space for it. And then additionally factor in, are you actually going to play with it or not? Only if you actually care. If you just literally want to get it to put on your shelf. I've seen crazier things. I've seen people spend more money on different kinds of things like that. I mean, honestly, just getting action figures to put on a shelf somewhere are not cheap to begin with. So getting this one is just, it's very cool. I'm just saying really think through whether you need that because I guarantee you something we have not talked about yet is this $410 is not the all-in pledge. Not by a long shot. If you are new to come on Kickstarters. If you're new to Kickstarter in general, first of all, welcome aboard. It's a crazy ride. Things get kind of expensive here. But secondly, understand that there's a few things you should know about this Marvel cam this come on campaign. And the first and most important of which is there's going to be optional buys left, right, and center. This $410, which is not even $410, by the way, because you have to factor in shipping. Shipping's going to add anywhere between $30 to like $100 to your pledge cost, depending on if you're getting a two wave and depending on the pledge level and depending on your location. So three different factors there all of which, and they have a handy any shipping chart, you know, you can look, scroll down the campaign and find that. But effectively, you're looking at a lot of extra money to get this game. And I do recommend splitting it into two-wave shipping. You're paying more for shipping, but it means you'll actually get your core primary box the Hunger Box or whatever it is, the Marvel Zombies Core Box, you'll get that along with people getting the game at retail because another thing you should know is the core pledge, not the extras, not the stuff you're getting, not the Galactus, not the uh, X-Men Resistance, but the core basic box will be in retail at roughly the same time you are getting your core box. So if you're sitting there thinking to yourself right now, I am backing this Kickstarter so I can get it first, you might or you might not. So do not, in my opinion, you should not be backing this, this Kickstarter just to get it first if that's your only goal. If your goal is to get all the extras, all the add-ons, all the things that you will not be able to get at different price points that you will have to pay extreme, highly, much higher uh, second-hand market price points on them later, then you should get this Kickstarter. But if your goal is to get it first, you can get it cheaper and possibly earlier, possibly earlier, possibly at the same time, if you just wait. But you'll only be getting the core box then. So that's the factor of the two-wave shipping. If you go for single wave shipping you'll save 20 bucks on the game now but you will be watching other people play their marvel zombies copy while you are sitting there on the comment section of kickstarter upset that you got your copy later so this this right here right now is your warning as far as that but that's the tangent for shipping and VAT, by the way, in case you're international, there will be VAT added on as well. So factor in another 20% on top of whatever you're doing to pay for the VAT price of your game. Uh, past that, you're, you're talking about $410 plus shipping, plus potentially VAT, plus all the add-ons there will be, and there will be a bunch of add-ons. If this campaign is less than $600 for the all-in, I will be shocked. Like, just straight up shocked is not even a question. I would anticipate between 700 to 800 based off what we're seeing for the starting day one. And that does depend on just how much Kaman wants to add to this campaign. And again, you'll be split. You'll have people like myself who are like, just give it to all to me. I like the Marvel Zombies IP. I like this going on here. Show. I want to get every single thing I can. You will have people like myself who are encouraging Kaman to basically continuously charge more money for more stuff. And then you'll have other people who want just the core pledge because it's tempting enough as it is. Even those $240 is like a decision point. Do I get both? Do I get one? What do I do? I don't know. And so just understand walking throughout the course of this campaign, you absolutely do not need all the add-ons. There will be plenty of content in your core pledges, whichever one you get. If you get the Undead Pledge or if you get the Resistance Pledge for both, there will be plenty of content to go around. You do not need to get more. But understand that as you go through the rest of this campaign, you may well be tempted to get more. So just, just fact that in because this is, I don't want you getting sticker shock. Understand that there'll be more stuff. As far as what you get in those pledges, let's start scrolling through some stuff over here. And we will get to the stretch goals shortly. Stretch goals and daily unlocks. They're going to have two daily unlocks every single day at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time and at 4 a.m. Sorry, 12 p.m. 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I think it was. And then 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, they'll have daily bugle unlocks going on in the campaign. Those will be twice a day. So basically 32 unlocks by the time the campaign is over, give or take one or two, depending on exactly when the campaign's ending and all that. And then you'll also have stretch goals that they've been slowly unlocking. And yes, we will talk about the fact that there's $500,000 in between stretch goals don't worry about it we got this so zombie mode zombie mode over here zombie heroes we have the players controlling the six core zombies 
that's what you have over here and we will have alternate various heroes for different things we'll get to that shortly you have your unique skills your zombie traits your bystanders 12 bystanders so you get a bunch of content in the game and then you additionally have you know your typical player boards your cards and then all the shield troopers shield troopers shield guards and shield specialists which are the equivalent of zombies if you're comparing this to classic zombicide from there you have your enemy superheroes like i said already these are your abominations effectively so these are the ones you're fighting against or if you have both boxes you could be fighting as these characters as well because you'll get any of the components to cross combat cross whatever them cross pollinate them you'll have your hero mode compatibility these are for if you get the resistance mode you'll be able to use all these cards and reverse them so you can use your bystanders you can use your hero cards your zombie cards all that stuff to uh, mix and match from there you have your marvel zombies x-men resistance this is focusing on the x-men dr x's man uh, mansion as the core location and then you have your six heroes this time you're fighting as heroes although again if you have cross compatibility these can be your abominations at the same time because we'll have those cards you have your unique skills you have your power ranking you're upping your powers you're, you're the way you could you upgrade your character trees unlike regular zombicide you will not have a pathway that you can augment to develop your characters rather you will have a direct fixed set of upgrade paths that's the bad news the good news is each character has their own incredibly custom upgrade so it's not ever a degree and there's no rinse and repeating of you know characters sharing the same skills everyone has their own unique tree that they are upgrading you have your heroic traits, you have your rescuing bystanders, you have more, well, all the bystanders, you have your power cards, again, all the components. Then you have your multiple man as your walkers, your multiple man will slowly be multiplying across the board. You have your reavers, your hellfire soldiers, those again, giving you more the tanks and the runners respectively. And then you have the zombie heroes, zombie heroes over here are going to be the characters you're fighting against. Although again, see what I said already, if you're swapping back and forth, you're able to fight. You want to be zombie icemen, your greeners come true. And honestly, come on, why is your dark phoenix not having like flames, like, you know, from the cool stuff? the same way Iceman's got ice. I would think Dark Phoenix would have flame stuff, but that's a... Uh, I guess you'll figure that out. We'll see. We have the X-Mansion tiles, we have the various more components, and then we have the zombie mode compatibility. So again, if you are getting one of these boxes and not both, you are losing out on some gameplay. That said, you may not want to play as zombies. You may not want to play as heroes. You may have a preferred play mode, and that makes sense. Uh, the downside is you cannot get the resistance pledge on your own. You cannot get X-Men Resistance on its own. You can only get the Undead Pledge on its own and then the X-Men Resistance together with it. So factor that into your decision as you go through this. Uh, from there, you have Galactus the Devourer. Galactus, who comes with two modes, inherently built in, he has two modes, he has a swapple head, swapple arm, so you can effectively have two different Galactuses in one, so you can use it with whatever mode you want, and he's the world leader, he'll be destroying tiles, he'll have his own missions, and depending on which way you go, you're either dealing with the master plan or ravenous, you're either using, you know, uh, the Fantastic Four lost tech, or you're stealing the entire power, you're going through different options the way you play it, and yes, it comes with the Silver Surfer as well, the Silver Surfer, that again, comes in two modes, a regular, you know, regular Silver Surfer, and a zombie Silver Surfer, and you can use them in Galactus. Galactus, and you can also, in the Galactus play mode or whatever, you could also use them as a more powerful enemy to fight against or to deal with, depending on the, you know, your zombie hero or your enemy or however you deal with them, so fact that into your decision as well, again, giving you more gameplay. Uh, from there we go to, speaking of gameplay, from, more, we get, from there we go into the uh, the two Crackle of gameplays, again, I've played both of these versions, they're great, and then we go to Daily Bugle. We're currently at five updates so far on the first day, and rest assured, I guarantee you there will be at least another full video on Marvel Zombies before this campaign is over, as well as talking about it in my two back or not to backs going up every Monday. So stay tuned for those if you want more updates as far as changes, unlocks, optional buys, all that stuff. The Daily Bugle, like I said already, will be 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time every single day. That's going to be two updates giving you just inherently unlockable stuff. Uh, in this case, for today's first update, we got basically six more characters. Alternate poses, alternate alternate versions of playing as the hero or zombie version, respectively, of different characters such as Iron Man, Wasp, uh, Sabretooth, uh, Zombie Miss Marvel, Zombie Rogue, and Zombie Wolverine. So again, more cross-compatibility. I don't know if they'll be doing characters for every single option. I don't know if every single character will have have their zombie and non-zombie mode i don't know uh, it doesn't seem like it but maybe they will maybe for the core we'll find out we'll see we're gonna be here every single day checking in tuning in to seeing what they unlock as far as stretch goals they are unlocking stretch goals starting at two million dollars and i can already hear people losing their minds i mean i can i don't have to hear it i have to just read the comment section like hey come on congratulations we gave you three million dollars day one and you're you're pacing them out and you're taking advantage and you're not really delivering the the content you should be delivering so this is a good time to talk about stretch goals in general. Again, whether you're new to Kickstarter, whether you've been here for a few times, or whether you, I mean, if you know the full thing, if you've been here long enough, you know how it works. Stretch goals are not generally going to be exactly in pace with another. You compare one Marvel campaign, one command campaign to another, and you might have stretch goals in one being unlocked every $20,000. You might have one in another campaign being unlocked every $500,000, although this is, this is the biggest gap we've ever seen. 
And the reason for that is because stretch goals, if they gave you a stretch goal every $20,000, the amount of content they'd have to give you would either would be completely insane. Either they'd have a cap on it, and at the end of day one, you'd be like, all this stuff's done. We unlocked everything, guys. We're good. Okay, we unlocked it all in day one. We got to a million dollars, and here's all the stuff you unlocked. Or alternatively, they'd have to keep giving you stuff in a way that is not practically viable. Stretch goals are generally planned out. The IP, the licensing, the sculpts, all this stuff has been done with. They have gone through this. They have a good sense of what is coming in this campaign. They have a good sense of what is going to the stretch goals. I'm not saying there's no wiggle room. There might be wiggle room, and I understand I'm talking from my couch over here. I'm not like uh, in Kaman's boardroom talking about what's going on. I'm saying in general, especially with an IP, these sculpts are not being created on the fly. They got these approved. They're going through the process, and so these are planned out which means when they have these, this pacing that they're going through, the pacing that has six alternate characters on day one, plus another five or six uh, sculpt miniatures from various uh, stretch goals that have been unlocked, that's all planned and paced around the usual pacing of a command campaign. And like I showed you already, that's going to be fairly consistent across the board. There's wiggle room as far as how they can navigate and, and, and flow things and then be like, oh, the funding's dropping off a bit, so I'll give another one of every 100,000 here. There will be plenty of stretch goals and daily unlocks that are very Kickstarter exclusive before this campaign is done. So I understand it's frustrating. Trust me. I mean, if, if you compare one come on campaign to another and you see one is stretch goals every $15,000. And the other one is every $500,000. That is insanity. Unless, of course, you understand that it's not actually going to be based on the funding amounts, and rather it's based on the general pacing of the campaign. Their goal will be to give us a certain number of new stuff each day, and the, the daily unlocks will be well-suited to pace out for the slowing of the stretch goals. The net result, though, are going to be hundreds of extra miniatures in this Kickstarter campaign compared to getting it at retail. Now, you could wait. This is a good time to move into the, uh, you know, should you back it, should you not. This campaign is going to cost you more money on Kickstarter than it's going to cost you in retail. That's not the question at all. That's a given. At retail, you'll be able to pay pay 80, maybe 90 bucks to get a core box here. You're paying $130 plus shipping, plus paying it now instead of later. You are paying a premium. So what are you paying that premium for? And the answer, at least with the Come On campaign historically, is you're paying that premium for the stretch goals, the, the exclusives, all the extras that you can't otherwise get later or you can get it later by paying a hefty aftermarket price. And I guarantee you that hefty aftermarket price is coming. This game is absolutely going to hold its value. If your question is whether you should back it from a sense of holding its value, yes, yes, you should. If you skip on this now, if you pass on this now and you want to get it later, you'll be paying one and a half to two times the price you paid on Kickstarter. That's not even a question. I mean, just you can see the amount of excitement and, and desire for this game so far. I mean, I saw uh, we've had, we had people talking about how it's oversold and, you know, come on, it's milking their IP and what a terrible company and all that. That could be. But they're able to do this because people want it. People want this game. People want this system. People want this this IP slapped onto this game system. And so they're effectively giving the people what they want, which means that's going to be true down the road as well. You fast forward a year and a half when this is delivering, and that's another factor. They expect a year and a half till when it delivers, although the core box, the first core box, is coming earlier, supposedly, assuming things go well. So you will have a core retail-ish experience that you can dive into just if you want, when you want all the extras, you'll have to wait for that. But yeah. This is something where the value is going to hold because the demand is always going to be there. And this, unlike other Marvel campaigns, unlike other command campaigns, I should say, this is one where you might see reprinted content. I say might with a heavy asterisk. You see, Tuman in general never typically does reprinted content. In general, they, their campaigns are always new stuff. They have season two, they have season three, they have a new version, a new version of that. They don't really do reprints. The one exception, historically, that I'm aware of is Marvel United. Marvel United, when they came back to the table with Marvel United X-Men or whatever it was, the, the new version of it, with all the extras, that's the one time they offered the original content again. That might hold true as well here. Working with Spin Master, working with an IP, that might mean that this is one of the few times you'll see it come back to Kickstarter. But even then, if you compare it to the original Marvel United, the price will still be more expensive. You're just not talking about one and a half to two times the price more expensive. So yeah. This will absolutely hold its value. I'm not worried about that at all. But now if we move past holding its value, if we're looking at focusing on best bang for your buck, you have a few options. One is you can wait for retail and pay retail prices to get the retail game. You'll have significantly less extra content, but if this is a game that you're not pulling out and playing often, that's not that big a deal. You'll get it at the same time as everyone else. You'll pay significantly less, almost half the price, and you'll have a more than playable game that will give you plenty of content. 
Now, the flip side is, if you want the extras, if you want more heroes, more zombies, cross-compatibility, whatever expansions are being added, whatever alternate characters or enemies you're fighting against, if you want any and all of that stuff, then the Kickstarter is going to be the way to go to get all of that stuff at a reasonable price. Again, that doubling of the price, the near doubling of, you know, $130 plus shipping compared to paying $80 or $90 at retail, you're going to be getting a ton of extra exclusives for it. You're going to be getting extra abominations, otherwise known as heroes. You're going to be getting extra characters, otherwise known as zombies. You're going to be getting extra, extra, extra content you can have, as well as potentially upgrades to the content. So it really depends on what you're willing to pay. If you want more gameplay at a reasonable price point, the $130 Undead Pledge or the $240 Escalating to $240 is going to give you a ton of game, an absolute ton of game for that price point. $240 will give you two core systems with overlap, with cross compatibility, with being able to mix the systems back and forth to have even more ways to experience more stuff. $240 plus shipping plus that. That's going to be the best bang for your buck in the sheer amount of gameplay experience you will get out of your money, but it's still nearly $300. So you have to decide if that's worth it. And then escalating to, to Galactus. Escalating to that $410 pledge. If it's worth it to you, go ahead. But back responsibly. You're paying an extra $170 plus, of course, shipping, plus, of course, that, plus, of course, whatever, in order to get a small amount of extra gameplay. Maybe that's going to be the coolest thing for you ever and it's worth it. Or maybe you just like Marvel IP or the Zombicide IP or something enough that you're willing to do it. But just back responsibly because that starts to, to really downgrade the degree of gameplay you're getting for your dollar. Now, the expansions, and they will come, and like I said already, there will be another video talking about this, so we'll be going over it all. The expansions will add more content, generally, come on, campaigns in general. The, the expansion content to cost ratio is usually not as good as, as the core pledge, which means my recommendation for maximum gameplay, maximum value, will be the $240 pledge, but obviously, if you want more stuff, the more stuff will 100% be available. If you're looking for reasons not to back this campaign, I'll link to a few down below. There'll be at least two videos down below, one right now, maybe one added later, as far as if you need incentives and reasons to not back this campaign, I can try to help you out there. At the end of the day, this is a campaign that I'm excited about. This is a game that I, this is a game system that I like. It's a IP that I like. It's a game that I've had the chance to dive into and play, and I like it. It's the best Marvel, it's the best Zombicide game I've played yet. Part of that is biased by the IP, part of that is biased by the freshness and the changes they brought to the system that are larger than the typical changes we've seen in the Zombicide universe until now, and part of it is just that it's a good game. It really is a good game. I'm very excited for this one, and we'll see. Do you think it's going to cross $16 million? Like, I don't think it's crazy. I think this crosses Frosthaven. Just based on the day one pacing, just based on the fact that there's going to be more unlocks, just based on the fact there's going to be more optional buys, and the continued drip of people coming into the campaign, the continued drip of people escalating their pledges, this is going to cross Frosthaven. It's very exciting. Until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. I hope you find this video in some way helpful. I apologize for the excitement. I like this game system, and I like this IP. And like I said already, if you need a little help uh, with the FOMO, uh, staying away or anything like that, I'll have some videos linked in the description down below. Until next time, I'm Alex, I said that already, and have a good one.